now that back wheel's off, I can take a look at the brakes. So the brake pads here um, are, you know, they're not looking bad, but um, uh, service guys gave me a warning. Right? They said 15% raining. I don't know, I'd give it maybe more like 20, but uh, it's about two millimeters um, that's left here before we're, before we're in the total danger zone, maybe a millimeter and a half. And I'm getting ready to head on a trip on Washington BDR and a ride up from California. So it's a thousand miles up, thousand miles back, and 600 off road. So um, uh, yeah, it's uh, I, I'll be I'll be in danger by that time. So I'm going to go ahead and change them. Um, if you uh, if you order brakes, rear brake pads from BMW, they're about 67 bucks. Um, and uh, I checked the part number on that versus the part number on some of the other models. Um, and as it turns out, uh, BMW doing what they ought to be doing, trying to make, make things cheaper when they can, uh, reusing parts. The F700, the F800, the F750, the F850, and even the G650 um, are all the same rear brake pads. Um, I don't have the brake, I don't have the pad number, uh, the BMW part number on, on me. But, um, but what I do have is, uh, is this equivalent, uh, is the um, EBC equivalent, and that is uh, the FA213V. Um, I chose the V, which is the semi-centered um, version of the pad. Uh, from my reading, the semi-centered gives a little less stopping power than the HH, uh, which, which the FA213HH would be that version, uh, if you're looking for them. But uh, this gives a little less stopping power, but it gives a lot less um, wear on the rotor. And um, so I would, uh, given that the rear brake isn't the primary braking element, um, I would prefer to, uh, to give more life to my rotor and, um, and a little less stopping power. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. Um, we'll see if I change back and, and go to the HH on the next go around. But, um, but anyway, that's my theory. I'm sticking to it for now. And uh, so we'll change this out. Uh, I think uh, next steps here in terms of changing out the pads, we gotta get the pads off, but uh, this, uh, this little uh, retaining pin has to come out in order to have the pin come out. And then once the pin comes out, then the pads drop off. And uh, the only other trick is that uh, the, uh, the piston that's in there has to be pushed, pushed in a bit. And you gotta make sure that you uh, are, are careful uh, to look at your uh, fluid level and make sure that you're not going to overflow if you've if you have topped off if you recently topped off your brake fluid and then you change your brake pads you could overflow your uh, your reservoir there and that would be an ugly mess since it's brake fluid um, so uh, don't want to get that on your paint so anyway we'll do that and uh, see how that goes so a little screwdriver here and that's no big deal pull out came out by hand little cotter pin and uh, I'm not sure how to get this thing out. I guess I'd knock it out. I'm gonna have to get a, something to poke at it with and uh, maybe a hammer. Back with a hammer and a punch. Let's see if we can do this nicely. If there's such a thing. A punch in there. A finger over the other side. Use the swing arm as a, as a vice, I guess. I think it's moving. Yeah, it's moving. Hooray! Okay. So I can drop the big equipment. There's the pin. Don't drop the pads, just in case I need them for some reason. As always, the pin doesn't look great after uh, several miles. This is at 6,400 miles. I'm a little surprised that uh, my rears are are out uh, this far or are down this far. But I do commute on the bike, so I do a lot of stop and go and uh, lane splits um, that create a lot of weirdness. So anyway, um, a quick, uh, very light sandpaper on this. Uh, you know, like a very fine grit. Um, 200 plus, 220 plus, uh, maybe even 400 or so um, to pull off some of this material 
and a little bit of um, uh, high temp grease or uh, uh, oh darn what am I thinking anti seize anti seize would be great to just uh, coat this with real lightly uh, before reinstalling it and uh, and then we'll we'll reinstall the brakes so I'm gonna now that my thumb has been sitting on the brake pads I can pull these brake pads off they sit on the other side they just sit on top of the edge of a little uh, cliff edge there. Alright, so I'm gonna have to use a pair of pliers or something to uh, to press press that piston back in a little bit to make room for the new brakes because uh, the brakes are thicker and so the rotor won't actually fit in between them with the piston out as far as it is in its natural position. Uh, so it'll need to come out and I may need to relieve a little bit of pressure at the reservoir um, uh, to, uh, to let some of the air out of there as, it's, uh, as it begins to fill up. Okay, so um, I went off and found some sandpaper and such. Um, so this is this is 320 grit sandpaper. I was hoping to find some wet sandpaper uh, that was like higher higher uh, higher grit or uh, finer. <laughs> Easy for me to say. I also got some steel wool. I'm going to try that first because um, you really don't want to change the diameter of this thing, right? It, it needs to be a good good fit, even though it's got this uh, fitting uh, piece in there at the back end of it. You do want it to be a good fit. So, uh, so I don't want to modify it. I just want to. I just want to get rid of the gook, right? The gook is uh, will will cause the brakes to stick and stuff over time. Um, I also got some anti seize uh, for putting on it after the fact, uh, which will uh, keep it a little cleaner over the over the life of it. So let's see what the. I think this is four aught steel wool. Um, let's see if this does the trick. It certainly clean cleans it up pretty quickly. Um, just that little bit of a uh, couple back and forths. So, uh, so at least I know where where to concentrate on with the sandpaper if I choose to. Um, but yeah, this is really nice. It's just shining it up really nicely and getting rid of some of what what wasn't really much more than discoloration. But uh, so this is uh, this is in really good shape. I'll take the sandpaper and just give it a quick buff, and that uh, certainly does the trick. So that, that area was uh, was pretty black still. Alright, so that's gone. Nice. You can get this back part over here by the where the pin goes, the cotter pin goes in. Nice. So that's nice and shiny. Make a nice smooth travel. So uh, so there's our finished product. That's uh, Looks much nicer. And then we'll just put a little bit of anti seize on it. And this is just a bit. Get the excess off with my glove. And there we go. Alright, so I did squeeze the caliper, or, uh, the, the piston back in a little bit further. And uh, you can see at this point, my uh, brake reservoir is quite full. Um, I can still see a little air gap there at the top, but not much. So um, I'm a little concerned that uh, I'm not going to get there, <laughs> get as far as I need to get. Uh, and I tried to get the top off of the reservoir to at least let the air uh, not be pressurized in there. And uh, it seems tighter than I would like it to be. Uh, so I'm not thankful for that one. Um, so uh, I'm going to fiddle with that, see if I can get that open a little bit, and see if I uh, need to wick some of the brake fluid out of there. Um, I could stick a, you know, a clean, um, a clean uh, shop towel in there and just let it wick out um, you know, a mill, milliliter or two in order to, uh, to get this guy down to a point where the rotor will fit back in. Uh, catch up. I didn't realize the camera wasn't running. Sorry. Um, so I did. Uh, I did bolt this back on in place. After uh, a bit more leaked out, um, I had uh, towels underneath it to catch it and soak it up. What I had to do was um, squeeze the pistons back into their uh, into their natural position um, all the way. Um, I guess it makes sense that uh, that the 
original position for them was specked out that it would be an all, you know pressed in all the way that meant that uh, some of the some of the fluid did get lost there um, which is totally fine because now that there's pads to make up the difference it's totally fine uh, just uh, it's a matter of uh, mitigating the mess so anyway um, so I put the pads in and um, those are really not a big deal oh uh, one other thing um, I did there's a there's a clip back in the back where the shelf where this thing sits um, it's it was also sort of equally dusty like the uh, you know brake dusty and stuff like the pin was so I took uh, I took some of the steel wool and stuck my finger back in there and just kind of rubbed at it um, at that spring and uh, that cleaned it up quite a bit and then I took uh, a large large screwdriver um, it, with the steel wool and just ran it up and down so that the steel wool could kind of get in the nooks and crannies and that actually shined it up quite a bit so uh, so that'll be, have a smoother travel um, as it uh, as it goes and then um, I went to put the pin back in and the pin went in okay except that uh, the trick with the pin is up here at the top you can see the hole here on this left side this is where that cotter pin goes in so the pin has to be in far enough for that and um, just by squeezing with pliers here um, in order to get the pin in it clicked into place but the uh, the hole wasn't showing yet or it was only half showing uh, so I, uh, I, I actually just took the rotor like I did for taking the pin out and I laid it down this way and used a, a punch and a hammer and just gave it a couple of taps and uh, that persuaded it to uh, to get seated in the rest of the way the cotter pin There we go. So now that's in. Um, and uh, now I'm going to spread the pads. So, I do this right. And I, I'm very delicate with the screwdriver. I've done this before. And give it a turn to spread the pads as you wish without mucking them up. On the brakes, um, I ran into this problem where it looked like the um, the rotor couldn't possibly fit back into the slot because there was this big metal piece that was in the way. I tried to show it earlier. I'm not sure I did a good job, but um, <clears throat> after a bit of fiddling, it turns out that uh, that this this metal piece that's up in here. that was in the way um, can be and it looks like it can't be moved it looks like a totally immovable object um, it can be moved so I took uh, I took a big screwdriver and I was just I was basically just nudging around trying to figure this thing out and I figured out if I put one side of the screwdriver on that metal piece and one side on the on the pad you can see that the thing moves so this whole piece is on these little pistons here these rails or whatever and so this whole thing slides this way this piece kept moving back so it seems like if I move it enough times it, uh, it eventually stays in place because I want it like this and when I let go it springs back but I think I think it is springing back less each time so this may just be a matter of being persistent um, so the little screwdriver method for spreading the pads I'm back to that and I think I have enough room here for the rotor to slip in there. So uh, we're back to square two <laughs> um, and I did check with the repair manual and there really wasn't anything stated at all about this whole moving assembly um, which is a little shocking. So I think I have clearance now if you look down the line you can see down the line that uh, that, that metal piece is no longer in the way. So I'll be right back with uh, uh, with the camera position for uh, hopefully final uh, installation of the of the wheel. With